And whenever you're ready, John. Go ahead, John. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. And thank you for joining so much. Today, we have um, with us uh, Dino Pale, who is from the Philippines. Dino is a brand ambassador, um, fabulous artist, and he will be answering questions as he does a portrait today. Um, uh, Dino's site is on Facebook and Instagram right now, so if you want to go to his site and see some of his works, um, I believe he's also going to be showing some of his works before he does a demonstration. So if you're on um, Zoom, you can actually interface with uh, Dino live. And for those of you on Facebook, I'm going to do that right now. Um, as you ask questions, I will forward those to um, Dino so he has them. So with that, Dino, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, John. It's Thank you also for inviting me. It's pretty an opportunity to be invited, especially with a global audience. It's a pleasure. So, Hi, everyone. Um, the artists are going to ask you questions. I asked Dino before we started if it would break his concentration. He says, nope, it doesn't break his concentration. So whether it's now or when he's doing artwork, please ask questions. He's ready for those. He likes those. Um, so there's, uh, there's some questions that the, um, the viewers have asked over and over. And are you going to show artwork? Because I can do it. I can ask you the questions after showing your artwork. Are you going to show some um, images of your artwork? Yeah, we have that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so why don't we do that first? All right. Let me just here. Hello, Claudia. Jofi, hello. Okay, so I'm going to share screen. And what you can do, um, Mr. Pahao, <laughs> is just briefly describe um, each work. Yeah, and sure. Start now. Go ahead. Okay. This piece was done, I think, three years ago. And um, he's a fish smoker. And I wanted to capture his emotions while. He was smiling, yeah, obviously he was smiling. And um, yeah, uh, this this is an entry piece. And this one is, was painted and um, two years ago. This one, the setting of this one is in Seattle. And then I was using a lot of colors with this, like uh, uh, cobalt teal blue. And this one is, an entry from a China exhibition. Um, yeah. What size are these? Um, so the first few paintings are full size, which is 36 by ah, uh, 76 by 56 centimeters. And then this one is half size of the imperial size uh, paper. Uh, this one is half size. Uh, it's just commission piece by a friend of mine. It's her, um, it's his grand, uh, grandmother. Mm -hmm. So this piece is also a commission piece by a friend of ours. Um, I wanted to capture the, the emotions of having a, something like a belongingness, uh, uh, family values and all something like that. That's why I, I throw it. I throw a lot of soft, soft touches down below, so so as to have the feel of the warmth of the of the hands. I really appreciate your work um, as a retired photographer. Mm. I um, actually did a beautiful portrait similar to that with one baby's hand, a smaller baby and the dad's hand, you know, the fingers. But um, my question is, do you do your own photography? You, I know you have to take um, photographs for your reference photos. Do you take your own photos? Yes, I like to take my own photos because, uh, you know, it gives you connection to your subject. 
Whereas if you're going to just simply copy a photo from, from your client, you don't have, it's hard to capture the emotion. So it's best to do your, your own thing. So at least you can have- Yeah, uh, everything is yours <laughs> actually. Yes, as much as possible. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this one is wow. from our hometown. It's, it's obviously a sundown thing. Then I wanted to capture the, of course, this, the warmth of the sunset and the blue. I use a lot of, um, I think I was using this uh, cobalt, I don't know, uh, Persian blue. Cobalt blue, I oh, know not cobalt blue, Persian blue. And then a bit of ultramarine blue. And then I use cobalt teal blue. And I saw Indolin yellow for the, for the yellow yellow part and um, vermilion. That's a beautiful, um, those colors are gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, this one is a demo piece from Indonesia. Um, there was an event in Indonesia and then I was invited to, to do a demo. Um, yeah. This one is also a a piece from another exhibit. Um, it reflects the values of uh, a father doing a livelihood. Uh, it's doing, you know, just for the sake of bringing food in the table. Then I wanted to capture the softness in the water without doing much detail in it, just a suggestive uh, strokes. And um, I was happy with it. <laughs> Although a bit experimental, but you know, um, I achieved what, what I wanted to, to, to do the painting. This one is an event in Singapore. It's a national day. And um, still I wanted to capture the emotion of this kid. Um, she, wa she was really unaware that I was taking photo of her. So it's really a, a candid shot. So you can you can see that you know the emotion was there. She was she was thinking something else while eating this uh, lollipop. And um, this one is a piece during the pandemic dedicated to uh, frontliners. Uh, I did this thing. I did, I did this painting during the first week of the pandemic. Yeah. I really enjoyed the demo on that one. You have that on your YouTube channel. Um, wow. I'm just curious what kind of paper you're using for portraits and what kind of paper you're using for your plan air? Oh, okay. Most of my papers are um, either Arches, Saunders, and um, recently I used Bao Hong from China. It's a good paper. It's a 300 GSM thick, 140, 140 pounds paper um, that can, you know, can, can resist the, the water. It's all rough. Uh, this one, um, an entry from another exhibition here in the Philippines. Um, actually, this is a, a feast here in Cebu, Philippines. It's a religious, religious thing. Then, um, yeah, still I wanted to capture the, the emotion and the, the burst of the colors. You know, I wanted to, to, to have the feel of the festival. The so beard is fascinating on that last one. The beard was fascinating how you um, captured yeah. that. You know, even though, yeah, I mean, I've been a portrait photographer for years. That's that's what I do. So portraits just always capture my attention. I try not to do portraits with my watercolor work. I try to do something else. But mm. um, these are gorgeous. I'm sure the um, photographs are gorgeous by themselves that you took. Yeah, uh, thank you. Actually, I, I during... The painting process, a lot of things that I, I did not anymore paint just to, to focus the focal point.
straight from 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 the side of the assault. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. Are you willing to speak briefly on to how you got the highlights in the beard? Um, sorry. Uh, how did you get the highlights in the beard? Oh, highlights. Okay. Um, I use masking fluids by this one, and a bit of scraping. Yeah, and then some of it are leave out. Yeah, it's a combination of, of those things. This one, um, these are kids in the street wanted to do some jingles, you know. I wanted to capture the, the move movement of the hands while while he was he was playing with me. Then yeah, I was doing some jingle thing. Yeah. And this one is another piece from um, during the pandemic, so I I give it for free for all those you know frontliners who wanted to paint, to paint along with me with this. Yeah, this is a second piece that I did during the the pandemic. What First is stage. the size for this one? Sorry. Uh, Please, what is the size? The size for this one is uh, I think twelve by sixteen, twelve by sixteen inches. Yeah. That's the last um, sample art to be shared. Thank you. Okay, Don, those are excellent work. Very Thank beautiful. you. Those are beautiful. beautiful I really work. like the one yeah. with the guy, the guy with the hat, with the light blue hat. I, I just really like that one <laughs> for some Thank reason. You. Do you know how long have you been painting? Um. I started painting when I was still um, in high school, but it was cut short when I was doing other things. Then um, I get we are reunited when I was in college, like second year college. Then up until now, uh, I I still paint. Yeah, I think it's more than fifteen years, but it's on and off. <laughs> Do you paint every day? Um, before I paint every day, but not now it's quite seldom, but I wanted to, to push, I wanted to paint again. And I think going from what Gabriel said, um, you do both plein air and studio work. Yeah. Which do you like better? Uh, I like studio, I still like studio. I do plain air just for yeah, just for fun, but it's not really for exhibition. Yeah, just just to have the 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 the, the feel of the fresh air, then paint. Yeah. Is your main what size do you feel comfortable working in plain air? Plain air, the biggest that I can do is sixteen by twelve by sixteen at most. Yeah, it's much more easy than handy. It's quite handy too. How long does it take you to finish a average painting? I know there's no such <laughs> thing, but okay. Um, normally, if a studio painting, if it's a detailed one, it would took me around uh, two days at most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but probably. Yeah, it's it's around eight hours, something like that. Two days because on and off. Mm. Sometimes That's I can beautiful. I can finish in a day. Yeah. So one, I think one of the hardest questions that the viewers have asked each one of the artists, and I think it's the hardest, is uh, when do you know when you're done? Yeah. Okay. It's it's really a you know it's part of the practice. You know, you yourself knows that it's overdone or maybe half baked, something like that. Um, it's only the artist who can really tell with, with whether this painting is done or or it needs to be, you know, it needs to be retouched. Um, in my part, I mean, yeah, it, it's. It's, it's still part of the practice. I don't know. I, I can I cannot really explain on how to how to say when to stop or is it 
uh, does it still need to be retouched? Okay. Yeah. So Clarissa has two questions. I'm going to ask hers back to back. Uh, she's asking, how much planning or thinking ahead do you do for a painting? And what's your favorite time of day to paint? Okay. If I were to paint, I spend um, planning is one of the most integral part of the, yeah, one of the most integral part of the painting. I think 50% of the process is planning. So at least more or less, you already have another 50% um, doing the actual painting. Because if you, if you do have this 50% planning, of course, you already figure it out and what to do. It's, it's something like mapping on what to do. So e easier. Yeah. And, and favorite time of day? Um, dawn. I like to paint dawn. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Till midnight onwards. So we are in a perfect time, John. Yeah. For Philippines. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So Gabriel, that was almost the answer that Dino had for um, planning and how long it takes is almost exactly what you said yesterday when you were doing yours. Oh, for sure. Like planning sets you up to win. And uh, I was curious, though, you know, because Giovanni spends about, you know, three hours picking out a color. Uh, just kidding. 45 minutes. <laughs> but I was just wondering, when you go to do a painting, do you pick out your colors uh, that you're going to paint? It seems very intuitive, your work. But I was just curious if you're picking your palette before you begin the painting. Yeah, of course, it, it's. Um, yeah, it's really important to know your colors first, because you have to have this, the the actual feel of your of your painting. You must have the, you know, the palette that you need to. I mean, of course, there are, there are colors that it's not in the plan, but more or less, sixty or seventy percent of your color was already planned. That's my that's my take for for the paintings. Yeah. Rather than yeah, yeah, guessing on what color is this, it would took you so it, yeah, it would take you long if you haven't figured out yet what color are you going to use, you know. And how did you choose your uh, colors? <coughs> do you have the colors that you chose? Uh, how do they complement each other? Oh, okay. For the colors, it depends on the mood I wanted to portray. Of course, um, for the skin, it depends on the race, of course. Um, and sometimes I I make the painting more subdued or more impactful. So it depends on the on the on the uh, you know the yeah the mood. Like when it's festive, I wanted to throw in a lot of colors. If it's festive, then if I wanted to have more drama, so I I tend to tone down the colors. Yeah. And Anna, did you have a question? I did. When you're choosing your colors and you're deciding which ones you're choosing for your painting, do you play with them and see how they interact before you lay them down? Um, do you touches and playing first? Sometimes I do that, but um, you know, I, you know, watercolor is, you have, you, you do have a lot of happy accidents, you know, as long as the tonal value is there, it should be okay. And then, of course, um, try not to mix more than more than five colors at the same time. I mean, it goes. You know, as long as it's wet, it should be okay. So, Dina, going to what Ruby was saying, um, do you do a reference or a study before you actually do your painting? Yeah, or you do. Yeah, I do a study. I do a thumbnail sketch, like a composition. Uh, yeah, something like that. And I see I, I kind of cheated a little bit, and I saw what you were um, doing in one of your photos. So you already you already have a sketch. Of, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, excellent. Because yeah. I know you find it's I... very helpful to be able to draw um, in in terms of your process. Sorry. Sorry so that, you find uh, the ability to draw um, instrumental in your process of painting. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, drawing is one one of the backbone for especially for portraits. You know, there's no shortcut of it. You should have the the skills to draw in order to to get the resemblance, the likeness of the subject. It's really a fundamental thing. Okay. Yeah. So you have other colors uh, that we don't know about that's not like on your dot card. Yeah. Um, actually, I added two colors from 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 this painting. I'm going to add is uh, cobalt teal blue and kinacridon burnt orange. And which which orange? Kinacridon burnt orange. Kinacridon burnt yeah. orange. But a little a little close to kinacridon ah uh, kinacridon deep gold. But this one is more more on more on orangey thing. I wanted to combine this thing. And um, will you, I guess, as you're starting to do your portrait, will you show us your, your um, palette? Um, yeah. I think I, I certainly find it interesting to see palettes and kind of how they're laid out. So I think with that, Dino, um, you can begin anytime you like. I know you're doing a portrait. It might take you some more time. So we can start a little earlier if you like. And then we can all ask questions as you're painting, if that's OK. Yeah, sure. I'm good. So this is my palette. Oh, yeah. It's a, 24 color palette and I laid this thing from from warm colors to cool cooler one and this part here are the neutral colors earth colors and the browns uh, uh, this one are the grays and the violets yeah do you it's use big. neutral do you use neutral tint or paints gray you do use paints, paints gray as part of your paint palette gray. yeah yeah paints gray Paints gray and um, some. Now I, I, I'm using hematite genuine as well for this palette. So one of the questions that was asked: While you have you like to paint at dawn, do you have a favorite time to take your photographs? Um, okay, for photographs, it's best for me. It's best to take a shoot during. Um, Early morning, maybe around eight, eight to ten. Then in the afternoon, probably around um, three p.m. to to five, something like that. Because if I took photo on noon, the sun is, is too strong. Then most of the colors are, you know, just neutral. And then I like to, especially for landscape, I like to to take a shot during. If there's a rainy days, you know, rainy, rainy season, then after that there's a because the the image after the rain is really clear, you know that that's what mm -hmm. I observe. If it's green, it's really green because the lack of uh, presence of the sun, and you can see the colors. So I also love to take photos on that particular timing. Thank you. So now I'm going to start my painting. I already have this sketch because, you know, um, I was a bit intimidated if I can finish a piece, uh, especially for a detailed uh, portrait. But I'll try my best that I can finish it within an hour or less. So my process is, This thing, I need to wet the back of this paper. I'm using two inches flat wash. Squirrel hair, squirrel hair brush. And it's a mix with, um, I think, Taklon. Everybody's information that brush is Alvaro Castanet's signature brush by him.
Is this how you always stretch your paper with the clips? Actually, it's not really stretching. I intentionally wet the, the back of this paper so that, that I can achieve a very soft wash, you know. Um, you still have time to, you can buy time to, to fed all a bit. It, it won't dry up easily. Did you sketch this with the uh, Daniel Smith sticks or uh, pencils? Pencils. Yeah. You know, what is your paper clip to? Um, this one is just, just, uh, just to hold the paper. Yeah, because this, this one is wet. I need to have something to hold on to this paper, but it's not really stretch. It's, it's an acrylic, acrylic glass. Uh, this one, the back, the back one is acrylic glass. glass. Okay. Then my base color. Moet je papier toch voorbereiden? Dat moet langzaam nat worden. Dat is. Je kunt het zo wel even snel. Guys, hear us over there, or are we muted? Dina, can you mention on your work, on your desk now, what is that other essential tool that many of our fans here may not know? Uh, the one on top of your palette. Which one? Uh, this one? Yes. This one is just a foam. Um, yeah, it's a good absorbent for, for extra water rather than using a tissue or a towel. I find this one more effective. What type of foam is that? Um, it's for cleaning your car. Forget the name for this one. It's car foam. Here in the States, we have something like that, like at Lowell's or Home Depot. Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen that one too. So I use synthetic brush for softening the edges. This one. So before it dries up, I need to mitigate the, the edge first.
Are the pigments in your palette wet straight from the tube or are they all dried and dehydrated at this time? Um, it has a moist in the palette. It's not really dry, but it has, it has a moist. It's already activated a bit, just a little. So the only thing that has been left out for this is the high, the highlight of these, the eyes. The rest, I tend to put colors in it. Is there masking fluid on the highlight of the eyes? No, just say leave out. You know what? What's key? What? Uh, what do you do to keep your edges soft? I use this synthetic brush. Before it dries up, you need to, you know, need to mitigate it before it dries up. And then, because the, what, the, the paper is wet at the back, it won't dry up easily. Okay, then put it here. There's a question here from Andy. Andy's asking, why do you prefer to put color in the in the eyes around the white in the eyes? We can see all right, right. there. Um, ah, why do you okay. prefer? Yeah. You know, even there's no such thing as whites in the eyes. Even the the this white thing. I mean, this I portion think. here. Yeah. It's all a skin tone. I mean, the moment you put darks um, in here, it will pop out. It will. It, it, you can see the difference when when, when I put darks in this uh, the side of the eyes later. Yeah. As an artist, are you conscientious of the humidity in the air and how that affects the drying time and the speed of your painting? Um, I think so, but um, if it dries up earlier, you know, just put some thin layer of water and it will, it will soften your, you know, the edges again. Humidity probably, especially if you go out for clean air. Yeah, it dries up easily.
My first layer. Last time, I was a bit hesitant to use this cobaltil blue because of this, this bold color. But recently, I, I fell in love with it. Um, it has a, you know, unique um, color blends when you when you when you mix it with um, like. Deep, uh, can I do deep gold or uh, can I do more orange? Turner, someone's asking about uh, your colors, your skin tone colors. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share about your skin tone colors? Skin tone? Yeah. Yeah. Most of my skin tones, I use um, this one. Uh, Kinakidon deep gold, Kinakidon um, burnt orange, then uh, cobaltil blue. Then if I go dark, I add cobaltil uh, carbazole violet. And then if I go light, I add yellow ochre. Okay. Lips. Do you always paint in color or do you ever paint uh, in black and gray? Black and gray, um, yeah, monotone. I, I also paint monotone. Um, for studies, I do monotone. And um, yeah, it depends on the mood I wanted to paint. Um, just a while ago, I was mentioning that I, I, I try to tone down my, my colors if, if you wanted to, to create some, some, something like a sad mood or a deeper drama on it. So I, I try to tone it down. That, like, it's almost black and white. And what tube do you use for your black and gray studies? Sorry? What tube of Daniel Smith do you use for your black and gray studies? Um, paints gray, hematite, genuine. Um, what else? Sometimes I use browns, plain monotone for browns, like this one, can I put them? Born orange and Kinakidon uh, deep gold. Uh, 
A common thing with watercolor is it usually dries around 20 or, you know, 15% lighter on the paper. And what yeah, would you it. tell someone that is new to watercolor uh, about uh, mixing uh, this early in the stage? Um, don't get intimidated by the pigments, you know. If it tends to go dark, then I mean, you have to consider this uh, tonal values, right? Like when said the value scale is one to three, then it happens that your lightest color is it, it's not supposed to be that dark. So you go darker than that, then it, 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 will, it will be okay. Then add more tonal values, like one, two, three, then you go one, two, three, four, five. Then if it's go, if, if it's darker, then add more darks. That's the only thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you use um, Primatech colors for portrait? Um, sometimes, yeah. I use hematite, mix it with um, paints, paints gray. Hematite and a bit of, I don't know, green. Jedite, yeah. And in terms of color, uh, color mix, what's the difference in your palette between uh, painting uh, for painting portraits of children and um, adults, or is there a difference? Um, okay, for children, of course, uh, the color should be lighter. You know, the lesser the brush strokes, the better. Whereas, if you're going to, to paint adults, like old uh, old men and old ladies, so it's okay to do a lot of brush brush strokes um, because it add, it adds more texture in it. Okay, what would be? Neural. I got a Um, do you always use rough paper? I like to use rough paper compared to to so, uh, to, to the so, to the smooth one like um, hot press. Hot press, yes. I also use cold press. What's the advantage of using um? 
rough or hot press, a cold press uh, for portrait painting? Well, for cold press and uh, rough, it adds more texture to the to the painting and it justifies the watercolor, you know, especially for those um, genuine colors, it adds texture. Do you ever do light fastness tests on your pigments before you add them to a palette? Um, sometimes I do have I do have this uh, test testing paper before I load it to the to the actual painting. But um, sometimes it's I played it by by ear, you know. But it's best to to have this testing before you put it in your paper. If you're not so familiar with the colors, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good a good thing to have this um, tested before you load it. Now I'm going to use cobalt field blue for the shirt. So it's an accent right This is an interesting question, but um, so if you're at an opening of a show, if you're out painting and you have someone that comes up to you and says, did you paint that? How do you answer that question? <laughs> um, I say, of course. I mean, did you mean your, your reaction? What's your reaction if somebody somebody says, did you paint that? It, it, I'm, yeah. is, that is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can, I can always say it politely that yes, of course, I, I painted this. I'll try the uh, short and sweet method. Uh, how? You know, do you spray water on your on your painting if it starts to dry before you're finished? Yeah, it helps um, extend the 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 wet wetness of the paper or uh, the the paint. 
This is my spray. Do you have different sizes of spray? <laughs> I do have three sets of spray. A small one, a regular one, and um, I can then I can say this one big one. It depends on the size of the painting that I, I do. Well, that makes sense, you know. Uh, artists yeah. use different size brushes for different size paintings. Yeah. Because you don't need to have a big splashes for smaller areas. Mm -hmm. So you can have the smaller one. And there's a question here from Andy. This okay. besides smiling portraits, do you ever indulge into deeper emotions, for example, a client subject? Or a possibly a subject in anguish? Um, of course, yes. One way to, to capture the emotion is to you know internalize your subject. I wanted to go in of you know how they feel at that very moment so that I can really capture what's going on in that particular particular scene. It's it's not just throwing colors or just throwing some sketch. You have to be emotionally charged to to convey emotions. Uh, that's my take in doing the portrait. That's why I don't I don't do a commission portrait by just asking a photo reference from a client. I should take the photo and then I need to to observe to observe the the characteristics you know of the client so that I can interpret it in my painting. When you're um, making the paintings, do you look for shapes in the face? I'm yeah. still trying to learn how to see shapes. And so is that what you're doing? Yeah. It's, it's an important thing to look for shapes, like for, for instance, the jaw. Is it oval? Is it triangular? Or is it something like square? It's, it's very important. You have to be very observant on, on your subject. Lorena, Even the eyes, the eyes, it's all, it's all about shapes. The shadows too, right? The shadows, yes, the shadows too. And Lorena asks, is that blue, the cobalt till blue? Cobalt till blue, yes. Now I'm going to throw in the, I think I'm done with the massing. Check on two o'clock. Okay. Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah, sure. This, uh, you have, uh, I see, a very good uh, palette. This mm. is ceramic or uh, uh, plastic? Plastic. Your palette. Yes, it's a plastic one. It's a very Ceramic light palette. Pl plastic. It's a plastic one. It's very light one. What and name? It's a, it's a very it's a plastic. It's made of acrylic, probably. And it's very light. Convenient for if you do large paintings, you can just simply carry the whole thing. Um, a palette by Neve. N -E Neve, yeah, from Australia. And then I'm doing the eyes now. Thank you. You're welcome. Susan asked, do you ever paint animals? Animals, um, I haven't tried it yet, but I think I can I can paint animals too. Important thing for painting is 
understanding your subject. So whatever subject you have, you have to, you need to understand, you know, the characteristic of the subject so that you can paint that subject. Do you have any upcoming workshops? Um, we are planning to have a workshop this, this coming November because we receive a lot of inquiries if I do workshop. We'll be um, sharing screen information uh, later, Gabriel, as to how to reach out for Richard Dino for his workshop this November. So this is why I mean a while ago, the moment I put darks at the side of this, the shape of the eyes, the orangey thing becomes white, you know. You cannot really tell that there's a color in it. And Andy asked, do you leave the eyes till later because of the dryness of the paper or another reason? Um, you cannot do a detail if it's still wet. You have to you have to dry it up before you you do a, a dry brush, you know, a detailed one. And um, the brush that you're using now, um, I suppose that's a round. And what size is that? Huh? A round brush, number number four. Mm -hmm. It's a Kolinsky brush. By um, Skoda? By, by Neef. Oh, by Neef. Neef, yes. I think it's David Taylor's signature brush. Yeah. You ever use that chiseled in that's on that brush you're holding now? Yeah, this one. Yeah. This one is for scraping. You know, Annie has a question, which is, why do you leave the eyes until later? Because of the dryness of the paper or another reason? Uh, because of the dryness of the paper, it's hard to, you know, by doing the eyes, it's it's the most critical part in the in the portrait. You know, one, you know, if if, if it's still wet, then you you try to cradle it out. It will it will just simply burst. So it needs to to be dried. Do you intentionally have your eyes uh, focused pretty sharply? Um, I try to squint. Squint that uh, it's almost close. Yeah. Squinting is one way to check the tonal value of your painting. Mm -hmm. mm. So now I'm trying to do the eyes. You know, do you ever incorporate gouache into your paintings? Sometimes for, you know, for the, for the whites, sometimes, yeah, gouache. But I think I, I did it one, two years or three years ago. Yeah, but only one color.
When you're using the gouache, do you use just the straight white or do you tint it with another color? Straight white, straight white. Because last time I, I prefer to be, you know, purist, but nowadays I know a lot of artists use, you know, white for the highlights, but it's still considered, it's nice, you know, it has an impact. So I also adapted the thing. Susan says, I have great command of your colors. Thank you. And one good thing for if you're going to use, you know, flat brush, big brushes, um, the strokes that you can achieve is broader rather than using small brushes for big areas. You know, a lot of a lot of strokes that you can you will do. Then it will the you know the the wash is not that clean anymore. So try to use big brushes for for the washes. It will help uh, achieve a clean wash in your in your painting. In the preparation stage, when you're thinking about what colors you're going to choose for your palette, how much does color theory is how much is color theory part of that conversation and your meditative process in choosing the colors when you're choosing mood and the specific pigments you're using, and how much is it practice of knowing what pigments function in the way that you want them to? Okay, if you're talking about color theory, I will consider the temperature of the painting. Like for instance, I wanted to to have this one um, painted like um, it's it's an afternoon thing or it's painted in um, early morning. I'm going to apply the color theory for morning morning suns. I, I use cool yellows. Then for the afternoon suns, I use warm yellows. So yeah, I still consider this uh, the color theory. Is that is that what you mean? All right. Yes, it is. Thank you. I'm curious. Do you have a few pigments that you know so well in the way that they handle that they are ones that you go back to year after year? Um. Actually, for pigments, I I, I just wanted to play any colors, especially for, especially for you know for Daniel Smith because most of these colors are. Um, the intensity is is great. It's you know the, the pigment is really strong. So sometimes, regardless of the color that I, I pick, as long as the tonal value is correct, um, I don't really uh, put so much uh, weight on that uh, particular color. As long as I, I pick the, the correct tonal value, then it should be okay for me. But of course, I have I have my own prejudice of these particular colors. Yeah, but uh, my advice is um, focus first on tonal values. Um, whatever your colors you like, um, establish the tonal value. Then it's gonna be okay. So we're, we're over our time and so, um, is there another question that somebody would like to ask? And then Dino, I'd be um, very appreciative if you would uh, post your final um, artwork to Facebook and Instagram, because I think yeah, everybody sure. wants to see the finished product. It's absolutely beautiful. You're such a phenomenal yeah. artist. Um, so, Thank you. okay, Gabriel, go ahead. 
Yeah, we had a question earlier in the chat and the individual had asked, um, why do you prefer to put color in the whites of the eyes? And I think now that when we look at what the eyes are looking like now, that was really just to possibly add just a little bit of color onto the white of the paper. Could you expound on that? Um, actually, the moment you put darks at the, at the size of this, you know, the shape of the eyes, it will automatically define the eyes, you know. And then if you're going to leave this, this portion here white, it will become, you know, it will, it will create a, a hole in your painting. So like, it's, it's not there, you know. That's why I, I throw in some colors for this part here so that it will harmo harmoniously blend overall to, 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 the, to the portrait. I think the question was uh, referring to like the beginning uh, mm -hmm. when you were just putting down a, a light wash. Uh, okay. But you, you explained it well just now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to wrap this up within uh, 10 minutes. I tried to do this in 10 minutes. Oh, that, that's uh, yeah, it's going to be an overtime. I just wanted to say that because, you know, so if people are going to leave, they know to come and look at your final, your final work. Okay, then. So normally if I do portrait, I just focus on the eyes. The rest, um, I put lesser attention on it. because it's the most uh, critical part of the portrait. Tina, you are a beautiful artist, very talented. Your Thank works you. Are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank I appreciate you. you. Um, you got beautiful work. It looks like you um, intentionally photograph people with a lot of character and personality and emotion that, you know, you could definitely see that. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for me, doing a portrait is still a storytelling, you know. You yeah. Have, you have yeah. to convey the, the viewer that this is how he feels, you know. So you have to feel the emotion. I really feel like by there not being information of an ear shows your uh, mastery of portraiture. Thank you, thank you so much. Dino, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah, this sure. is Barbara. Um, Hi, Barbara. Do you, if you do a landscape, do you also wet the back of the paper? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. If I do uh, vast greens, um, I, I do wet the paper at the back. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And um, why is that? To soften the the strokes, you know, you need it. You don't need to to spray a water in it because um, you can try that one. You, you can tell the difference by wetting the paper at the back and uh, painting straight from from a dry paper. Uh, it gives you time to 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 fiddle a bit. Then it still come out soft. That's the beauty of wetting the back of the paper. So John says, uh, we can start seeing the emotions in the face. It, it is the eyes are just coming alive. It's just beautiful. Thank you, John. 
Absolutely. The expression is really, really nice. And one thing, don't use black in the eyes, you know. Even, even the iris thing is still a skin tone. Because if you put black in the eyes, it will become a, you know, it's like a button. Even the highlight has color. Okay, I think we can wrap up in two minutes. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll put the background first and um... we can do so much in a minute for background. <laughs> so before wrapping up, do you do you have any message for the artists who are doing portraits? Portrait your artists? Mm, that's a good call, Pause, yeah. Any words? Hi, Claudia. Do you mean me? Yeah. 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 Um, keep on practicing, you know. Um, there's no shortcuts in doing a portrait, especially if you're uh, looking for resemblance or likeness of the subject. Um, practice is the key. You know, um, don't get intimidated by the whites of the paper. You know. And then uh, try this one. Yeah. Every miss opportunity for the painting is an opportunity to, you know, to another door. I like that. Yeah. Thank you, Dino. You're welcome, Claudia. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, time is up, Mr. Pahal. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, we can share your work um, in our socials. You are staying in Seattle? Uh, no. Dino? I'm, we're here in Philippines. Sorry. <laughs> You're staying staying in Philippines and Ethel, yeah. where are you staying? In Philippines. Um, and it's still oh. 45 a.m. over here. Oh thank you for being up so early. <laughs> and if you can recall, Dina said his favorite time to paint is dawn, so he's good. <laughs> I was just wondering that living in Philippines. Or I thought uh, Ethel was in Seattle. All your products are from Australia, so I couldn't match. Our DS family is global. All <laughs> materials, the brushes, the palette, it's all from Neve. It's a very nice uh, store. I've been there. Mm -hmm. 
So yes, dear friends, we will just before John um, formally wraps up and say bye bye. Uh, we are posting Dino's work, the final piece in our socials. So Beautiful, Dino. Thank you so very much. And so you'll you'll post your final work so we can all see it. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I, I didn't mean the. No, no, no. It's just <laughs> amazing. It's amazing what you amazing. do in time. It's just beautiful. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. It was great seeing all of you. Bye-bye. Uh, please join next week. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you.